All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use SEMrush to SEO your Shopify store. I'm going to show you what tools you can use within SEMrush and how to do what you need to do so that you can actually properly optimize your shop. Now, if you don't have SEMrush, I'm going to put my affiliate link in the description below. If you click that link, you can get a seven day free trial. And in theory, you can do everything I show you in this video, and then you don't have to keep using it if you don't want to, though I would highly recommend you do if you are going to be doing SEO because it's going to help you a ton. So there's a couple of things you can do. I'm going to show you four primary things you can do within SEMrush, which are the main four that you're going to be using. Keyword research being number one, competitor analysis number two, rank tracking number three, and audits number four. So those are the four main things that you'll find that you'll use within SEMrush most of the time. So first off, we've got keyword research. So that's obviously the basics of SEO. You need to figure out what keywords you actually want to show up for on Google so that you can actually optimize the store for these keywords. So what you would want to do is you go into SEMrush once you've got it and you can search the keyword that is whatever you're selling and you can find everything around that so for my case i've got a e-commerce store selling coilovers which is car performance suspension i'm going to use that as an example here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to type in the keyword coilovers as that's the primary main keyword and i'm just going to hit search and so now what's going to happen is sam rush is going to give me all the information about this keyword you see it tells you how many people are searching this every month its assessment of how difficult it will be to rank for it what the search intent is and this is a big one especially for e-com because you want to make sure you hit the the correct search intent for the keywords what the average cpc would be and so on now what it also does is it gives us keyword variations so the variations in different things people search relating to this main keyword and this is very important we're going to go into this and what it also does is give you the search engine results page so what page one of google looks like for this keyword so if you went on google you typed it in this is in theory the results that you'd get now this is not always 100 percent accurate but it's good enough for you to work with to just show you what's actually showing up on google and what's also good about it is it gives you how many backlinks each of these sites have what traffic they're estimating they get what their referring domains are and what the authority score of that particular page is that's ranking so this can give you some really good info to see how competitive page one of google is for that particular keyword and you can see for this one it's fairly competitive so now what you would do is you would use this information to do the full keyword research and figure out what keywords you should actually be ranking for so i've done a whole video on keyword research if you haven't watched that already go watch it the link is up above where i show you in depth how to go through the keyword research process and decide what keywords you want to go for with your website however to give you a brief overview basically what you can do here is you can go into the keyword variations i'm going to open that up and you can also do questions now questions are obviously not going to be for your main pages however you can use this for like faqs or blog posts as well so i'm going to open these up and so basically this is going to open the keyword magic tool and so this is going to give you a list of all the related keywords and their search volume and their difficulty and, and even the intent and all these other things so that you can actually put a list together. So you can change some of these settings up here as well. So for instance, if you want to see the questions, you can just go to questions and it'll just show you the questions. But we're going to go back to all for this case because I've got the questions open. You can also change how specifically you want the keyword to match your main keyword. So like exact match, phrase match, and so on. Typically broad is pretty good. I usually leave that. If you go related, it starts going a bit wider. So this can be good in some instances, but in other instances, it can be too broad. So you can play around with this. But you can see here basically it's giving you all of the different variations so now what you would do is you would take this whole list and you would start dividing it up into the different segments that you would want to rank for so for instance you would have like the main category you could then make subcategories you can make like brand categories and then you could have the products as well once you go further enough down so this is what this is really good for and now once you go into the questions you can see here you got all these questions relating to your main keyword so what are coilovers what do they do how to adjust coilovers are these particular coilovers good how long do they last so on and so on and so these could be faqs on your pages these could be blog posts that you write to specifically address each of these questions however you want to do it but now you know what you should be targeting based on this approximately how much searches you're going to get on these keywords so then you can estimate how much traffic you should get and so on and so that gives you basically all the information you need to decide what you should target and how you should target it so that you can actually start optimizing your e-commerce store now the next thing you would want to do is competitor analysis so what you can do is for instance take a competitor let's say these guys i just pull them up from google and you would go into semrush and you can go to competitive research and so now what you can do is you can go domain overview and you can throw in your competitors and get a whole bunch of information so if you throw these guys in what the first thing you can do is you can just throw them in like that and just see information about their website approximately how much traffic they're getting and this estimate is usually off it'll give you a range so these guys are obviously getting like a decent amount of traffic but it's usually off by quite a bit it'll also give you the a lot of the organic keywords 
they rank for. Now, it won't give you all of them, but it'll give you a lot of them. It'll also give you the exact keywords they rank for. And you can see by what intent and all these other things here. Now, you'll usually find that you don't use most of this stuff. Like the further down you go, the less I tend to find that I use it. But what I do use a lot is the top organic keywords because you can see here what they're ranking for. And that gives you a lot of good ideas for what you could rank for as well. And another thing it does is it throws out the main competitors. So you can also find out who some of the other competitors are as well by looking at this. Now, another thing you can do with the competitor analysis is you can actually look for keyword gaps and backlink gaps. So I'll go through each one of those quickly. So first of all, the keyword gap, if you throw in their URL and your URL, now mine doesn't have any ranking, so it's not going to show anything. However, you can compare them. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you all the keywords you rank for all the keywords they rank for and what the gap in between those is. So you can see these are the two that we share the rankings of. That's just two products I uploaded. I haven't set this all up yet. But now if we go missing, you can see all of the keywords they rank for that I don't rank for. And so this can give you a good opportunity to find keywords that you didn't know or missed otherwise that some of your competitors ranked for that you can start going after as well. So you can see down the whole list here where they rank and obviously we got zero because I haven't done any of these. So that is some really good information you can get there. You can also find out what keywords you have that are weaker than theirs, that are stronger than theirs, the untapped ones, which are obviously the same as the missing in this case and so on. Now, the other thing you can do is go into the backlink gap. And so what this is going to do is show you the backlinks compared to yours. So if we paste in my website and their website and go find prospects, what you can see here is it's going to show us all of the URLs that they rank for that we don't rank for. So this is all of their ones. You can see, obviously, I don't have any things. I've built no backlinks to the site at all. It's I'm purely still building it. So obviously there's zero, but you can see that they've got a bunch of things. They've got Crunchbase, they've got BBB.org, they've got Amazon AWS and all of these different URLs. And so this can give you an opportunity to also see what they rank for, what you don't. And then in theory, you could go after those and see if you can get a link on those same websites or similar websites as well. So that can give you some good information there as well. And obviously you can see here the similar data, like with the keywords, the weak backlinks, the strong backlinks shared and so on. So those are the main things that you're going to do within the competitive research. Now, the next thing you can do is actually set up rank tracking, otherwise known as position tracking. So if we go into position tracking, you can actually track specific keywords you want. So now I've just opened up the blog on the same website because this I have been tracking and see here, if we go to top keywords, what you can actually do, you can see the keywords that you rank for. You would put this in. So you would go into position tracking and set this up. You would put in the list of keywords you want to rank for, which you can add to, and then it's going to track it. So we can go now and view all my keywords that I'm actually tracking for this website. And you can see here, it now gives you an overview of what's happening. So this is the visibility chart. We can go to estimated traffic. We can go to average position and you can go down here and you can see all of the keywords where you're ranking. You can set the date to see the difference. So let's say from the 1st of December to the 17th, it'll track basically what you're ranking for. So you can see what goes up, what goes down. You can sort this by the difference. So which ones have gone up, which have gone down and see what's actually going on just to keep an eye on your website, which is obviously quite crucial when you're doing SEO. This is one of the things you want to keep track of to see if what you're doing is actually working because ultimately your rankings are what's going to matter. Now, the last thing you can also do is set up audits. So if we go into site audit and I'll open up the blog again, you can see here, you would set this up. All you do is click audit, you put your URL in and then what happens is SEMrush will run an audit on your website and they'll give you all this data. So for instance, it'll show you errors on your website, warnings, notices, and so on that you have on the websites so that you can actually go through and fix them. Now, at different levels, you get more of this as well. Like for instance, you can get cannibalization reports and things like that. But basically if we go here, let's just click one of the errors. We can see what errors there are on the site. So we've got mixed content, broken internal links, all these things, which I need to go through and fix. I just haven't had time to do it. But basically it'll give you all these things. You can see here, the issues, warnings, so on. So you can go through and actually fix them. One note I want to make with this is don't necessarily freak out. If you see a large item of warnings, it'll give you warnings or errors. But let's say for instance, if we go into my internal links, you can see here that this broken URL, I'm not exactly sure why it's showing this random URL, but they don't necessarily mean the errors. It's just, it's picking up stuff that may or may not be a problem. And you just need to go and look at it, but it's going to give you a quick way to go over this and see what is going on with your site. So you can correct any issues that you have. That's the overview of how to use SEMrush to SEO your Shopify store. Like I said, my affiliate link is in the description below. So if you want to go get SEMrush, you can click that, get the seven day free trial. If you want me to coach you on how to SEO your Shopify store, or even run ads and do conversion rate optimization for only $49 a month, go to learndominatemarketing.com. And if you'd like us to do your SEO or run ads for your Shopify store with guaranteed results, go to dominatemarketing.io, book a call with us there. Catch you on the next one.